Let's build a model railroad from scratch together, right here on our Merklin YouTube channel. We have already unpacked the Merklin ICE2 starter set in the first two episodes. It includes two turnouts and an ICE train. We have already digitalized both turnouts in the last episode by adding an electric turnout mechanism, so that we can work the turnouts digitally with our control unit called a mobile station. In this episode, we want to set up the signals. In this episode, I'm alone, Mr. Jan Kristic usually assists me, I've prepared some signals right here. I thought to myself that I can probably do that on my own without his help. There are only a few things to consider, we will figure this out together. Also, we will answer all of your questions again in the comment sections. So if any questions should arise about the topic, go ahead and ask them in the comment section. We will make sure to answer them later on. All right, there are two major differences regarding the signals. This is the startup version by Merklin. It's a little bit simpler and it's a little bit cheaper. It's not quite prototypical, but still very nice looking. You can control this one using a control desk. The very basic starter set like this one, the class locomotive, contain an infrared remote control. I'll show it to you. Here it is. That's the way it looks like. You can combine these with the startup signals that you can control with a control desk. It is very similar to the old times when everything used to be analog. So here you can control your railroad in an analog fashion as well. If you selected a larger starter set like this one and containing the ICE2 train instead of a small one, you already have a different control unit, the so-called mobile station. The mobile station is used to control digital signals with installed digital decoders, so-called MFX decoders. These are these signals here, called Carla Light Home Signal by Merklin. You can see the MFX symbol right here. These signals can be directly controlled through the mobile station. You can switch between red and green. We will take a look at this together in just a second. We will add this signal to our railroad system, which is in front of me. Let's make some room so you can have a clear view. Everything you need for this is described in the description text below this video. At first, let's make some room and take the trains off the track since we have to reposition the tracks now in order to get a hold of the important spots. The ICE will stay over there. So what's important about the signal? Where do they go? How do I connect them? I've drawn this in here. This is the instruction manual from the starter set. That would be the two ideal positions for a signal. Two exit signals, meaning one train on track one must stop, one train on track two can go. Another good spot would be here, right in front of the turnout, an entry signal. So if both tracks are occupied, you could use that one. If you want a lifelike setup, you want a signal to be seen by the train conductor. That would imply the use of a distance signal. Uh, we would place a distance signal in front of the curve, since he has a restricted view there. These can also be bought from Merklin. They look like this then. A distance signal for your model railroad system. So depending on how realistic you want your system to be, you can install either many or few signals. You also have track block signals, light signals, old-fashioned wing-based signals, always depending on your time setting. If you use steam locomotives, old-fashioned signals are the proper choice. Um, on the other hand, modern light signals are more appropriate for this ICE2 train. We will use this modern signal now. Uh, I will install this light signal called a main light signal. You can find these as exit signals and entry signals. I'm using an exit signal now since it's the best in this situation. This way it will be very realistic. So what's in it when you unpack it? Of course, there is the signal. Be carefully when unpacking. This is not a very good toy for children. This is best done by an adult. We will place the signal over there. You can simply click it on the track. I'll demonstrate it on a single track. There's one right here. You can click the signal on the track. No need for clue or screws. The wires can be hidden neatly under the track later on. If you are a model railroader, more playing on the carpet, so the kind of person who regularly has to take the model railroad up and down again, 
Those signals are easy to use since the wires are hidden. We will try that later. All right, there is more inside the box. The MFX decoder is down here. We need the decoder in order to control the signal digitally later on. It's right in here, one moment. So this little box contains the digital decoder. There it is. That's what the decoder looks like. We will take off the plastic uh, sheeting. Now we can hide this decoder directly under the track. You can click the decoder under the tracks as well. Right here, uh, just a second, uh, the other way around. Now it's firmly attached and the track and especially the signal is connected properly. If you want low visibility, this decoder is what you need. If you're planning to install all of your environment firmly beneath the railroad system, you can always take off the decoder and place it under the table. That way, it disappears completely. Okay, the rest of this procedure is similar to our last episode, when we had installed and digitalized a turnout. The signal manual also contains an address list in the back. Each of these signals can have an address. Here you can see it. Address number one would be the first dip switch. You can find these levels uh, on the so-called mouse piano. You can move the levers up and down using a screwdriver. Right here, default is address number one. I hope you can see it. The first lever is up. So imagine you already have four turnouts in total installed, one here, one there, and two more over there. You would choose address number five for the new signal, since you are already using four signals. Take a screwdriver and simply change the levers on the mouse piano. Accordingly to the information in the instruction manual for address number five, let's see where it is, number five, to set it to address number five, level one and three must be up. First one is already up, so let's do the same for the third one. One, two, three, switch it up. Now this signal is programmed to address number five. Next step is connecting it. So you see, it's quite easy. Next thing is electricity. Let's unpack the wires. There are a lot of them. Let's see. This wire here is required to connect the signal to the track current. There are even more wires here for more professional purposes. For example, that the train is stopped automatically at the signal instead of being stopped by hand through the mobile station. But let's start really easy. I unroll the wire. You may as well do handicrafts live if you want to and if you have all the materials. We want to have our signals right here. That's where the train exit into the curve. So let's disconnect one of these tracks. Now you can connect the signal straight to the track current. As mentioned in the last episodes, we have the color brown for the grounding, which is connected to zero. And the red wire, our track current, must be connected to the letter B. So red wire to B and then the brown wire to zero. Now we can put the track back onto the railroad system. Okay, just perfect. Now we can connect the decoder to the wire. Where does it go? Many different ports. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's check the instruction to hook it up properly. You can always download these instructions in case you lose it. You can find them on the Merklin website as a PDF file. Where's our information? Here it is. That shows us how to hook it properly. Hold the decoder this way round. At the side of the decoder, upper left corner, there's where the track current goes. Upper right corner, that's where we hook up the violent wire from our signal later on. So let's do this right now. The first wire goes here on the side. Just click it in. Now it's right in there. And on the other side, we can plug in our signal. Let's check if that's correct. That's the right way. Now it's finished. Now I'll show you one more time 
this wire harness here going uh, to the track is plugged in at the top left and the signal is plugged in at the right top. We could click it under the track now, but that's not the track we need. I want the signal to go over here, so that's where we will install it now. The wires must, of course, be laid under the track, otherwise our train will run over it and derail. My train should stop here. I don't think you can already see the signal since the system is still on stop. Let's briefly dismantle it so you get a chance to see the illumination. We did not connect much so far, only the track current. So I want to show you, ah, demonstration effect. I pulled the wire, let's put it back together, reconnect the wire. The system has electricity again. If we did everything correctly and connected everything correctly, our signal should light up and that's exactly what's happening. It shines green and yellow as you can see, hopefully. Let's take the mobile station and then press the button with the little white turnout symbol. So press it. We have assigned addresses to our turnouts before. So turnout number one has the address number one. We can hear it click. Turnout number two, the other one, three and four are not assigned yet, since I want to expand my system later on. And address number five should be my signal now. Default is red, so let's change it. As you can see, my signal changes from red to green and back from green to red. Now I can already play with my system. Also, you can decide now whether you want a more playful model railroad. You can use one mobile station to control the trains, a second person uh, can use the second mobile station to control the signals and change them from green to red or other way around. The other person has to be careful, watch out for the color of the signal and control the train by hand. That's quite challenging and a lot of fun. Or uh, do you want the train to stop automatically? The easiest way to stop the train is to turn off the power. If no electricity flows through the tracks, the train will simply stop. That's very easy to imagine. Under the train is the grinder and here's the three rail system. The two rail tracks left and right and in the middle the point contact, the so-called Pukos in German. So if the grinder touches a track without electricity, the locomotive will not be powered and stops. The faster the locomotive goes when it's braked, the longer the isolated track must be in order to stop the train. If the train reaches a powered track again, it will accelerate again. So the question is, how do I de-energize an area? This area must be off the grid, but the area in front of and behind it should be supplied with electricity. The necessary equipment to build that is already in that little signal box. Let's put the signal aside. For now, it doesn't matter where it stands. Let's make some room right here. Um, we have to do some work on the tracks. We have to manipulate them. Next item we use are these little things from the back right here. They are called center conductor insulation. That's what they look like. One is missing where it is. These little red spikes, that's what they look like. We add these spikes to the tracks, always coupled, so two for each side. And that insulates the track. I will demonstrate that for you. We will use this track right here. That's where I want my locomotive to stop. First, stop the system by pressing the stop button. Now let's insulate that track. We have to insulate the track before and after. That's a very easy task. I'll show it to you. Here you can see two spikes. One is the positive pole, the other one is the minus pole. That's where our insulation goes. Over the one in the middle, we simply put the little red piece, the insulation, over the spike. Now there's no more electricity flowing. I hope you can see that in the camera. No more power here. I do the same with the other tracks, so the electricity won't flow there either. Also again on the inner side, it's a little bit hard to do so since the tracks and the insulations are brand new. 
You can see now that the complete track area is insulated. There are red spikes on both sides. Electricity can't flow from this side over there anymore. If the same is done on the other side, the complete track will be off the grid. So the locomotive will stop here. We will try that right now. We will take the other track, the curved one. Now we repeat the whole procedure. Put the little red insulation pieces over the spikes on the track. I have to turn the track and insulate the right side. Doesn't work, of course, demonstration effect. If you are having a hard time putting the insulation over the spike, use a screwdriver to bend them into shape a little bit. They are brand new and also they are supposed to fit tight. That ensures good conductivity on our Merklin railroad system to make sure the locomotive does not stop unintentionally. Only in this special case we want the train to stop. So we need the insulation. One side and of course on the other side as well. Alright, I hope you can see everything. Now the track is completely insulated. Right here there is no current. Here I have a bridge and here as well. No, wait. Here is electricity. And on this side is electricity as well. Let's put the parts back together. If we did a good job, our locomotive should stop right here. There is only one way to find it out. Let's try. We put the locomotive on the track. We use the track assistance. There it is. Start the locomotive and it should stop right there in a second. And look, it stops. If you move it up by hand a little, carefully, you are not supposed to do that by hand, it will eventually start running again, since it has power again. Now the next big task. We have to use the mobile station to decide whether electricity flows or not. That's what we have to use this wire here for. This little red wire here, we have to connect it to the decoder. We can tell the decoder, let electricity flow through the track or do not let electricity flow. That's the important thing. Uh, we have two wires here. Let's check the instructions to find out which goes where. Um, because I don't know either. I don't know it by heart. Let's have a look at the manual. It will tell us what to do. Here it shows the wire is hooked up at the bottom of the decoder. If you will hold the decoder in front of the description, we can see that the wire is hooked up down here at this part. That's connected to the insulated track area. The one, the one that's connected in the upper corner is connected to the track area behind the signal, behind the insulated area. Let's hook it up. I have all the wires right here. This wire goes here, be carefully. I hope you can see it. Perfect. This lower one has to be connected to the insulated area. Let's take this part out again. Also take the train off the tracks. This track in my hand will be insulated later on. The lower wire will be connected to the port with a track current or letter B. That's necessary for the decoder to control the track current later on in order to let electricity flow or not. The second wire will be hooked to an area beyond the track. Let's take out the track again. Where is the second wire? It is the one connected to the upper port. We connect it to B, either up here or down there. That doesn't really matter. I have it down here. Just a second. Now we need electricity for the signal. We already connected it to the track just a few minutes ago, but that was wrong because there is no electricity anymore. If we reconnect the signal, nothing would happen since the signal has no current at all. So we choose a track after the insulation. This one, for example. The brown wire goes to zero and the red wire goes to B. If the wires are a bit loose, you can do the following. You take a small pair of pliers like this one here. Uh, it's annoying when that always goes off. Easy as that. And now we connect it here. Looks like finished so far. Here are the two wires. This one delivers the current for the signal in order to let it light up. There are red and brown. The wire down here is connected with the decoder. Uh, through it we can control whether electricity will flow or not in this area. 
called breaking section. Let's put it back there and then pray that there will be no demonstration effect anymore. We built that live on the show. I hope everything is working now. First check, signal is lighting up. We did that right, that's good. Uh, it's red now, shines green, shines red, shines green. We'll keep it green for now. If we did everything right, the train should be able to pass by. Also, we installed the insulation. The train should be able to drive through the station. Let's try. It's working. And it's not having any problems. Should work the other way as well. If we switch the signal to red, the locomotive should stop. Let's see. And it stops. That's the thing. We switch the signal back to green and the little train should start again. We could have some fun with this now. One person controls the signals and works the turnouts with this mobile station. And the other one is the train conductor. Let's speed up the class locomotive to bring it back over here. Let's see which track is on. The inner one or the outer one. I think the turnout is set to the inner track. The signal is red, so it should stop here again. If the locomotive is too fast, maybe it might pass through the insulated area due to the braking distance. So it's best to choose a long enough section to make sure even very fast trains can come to a stop. So that's where the train will stop. So where's the best position for our signal? Fits best right in front of the stopped locomotive. That's where you can install the signal. I can set up another signal in the same way. Let's get another signal from back here. We can set it up parallel to our first one. So one to the left, one to the right. I can also get a third signal, which is placed way over here, in front of the turnout. Then an arriving third train will stop in case both tracks here are still occupied. It will not start until one of the trains here make room for it. We can place a distance signal there. The train conductor waiting here cannot see the red signal over there. A distance signal here will indicate to be careful. There's a red signal coming up. This setup on the model railroad would be very realistic. Now comes the famous question. We let the class go on one more time. Now we turn on the lights and the sound effects on the train, which some of them do have, like the flashlight on this one. I just turned it on. Now the train reaches the red signal and of course there is no current and so the flashlight on the train goes off. If you want to change that, you can build the whole thing in a fashion that would allow the lights and the sound effects to still work. That's what these signal modules are for. It's more for the professionals, you will need much more cables to get this work. We do have a tutorial for this on our Merklin YouTube channel. If you want to professionalize your model railroad with braking modules, for example, the locomotive will slow down a little bit and then lights and sound effects will continue, there's a tutorial. For the simple structure, which looks very nice as well, this is the way to go. It is very easy to connect. It took just about 20 minutes to do so. Everything you need is written down in our description text underneath this video. Which signals to get, which equipment and tools are required, it is not much that you need. You can decide if you want two people to play with the model railroad, having one controlling the signals changing from red to green, while the other one rides the train accelerating and braking the locomotive. Or you decide to switch off the power to stop the train when the signal is red. That's convenient if you are playing alone with your model railroad because then you have to press fewer buttons. We are slowly approaching the landscape part. In the next episode, we will build a model railroad line, create a bit of a slope. This part will be lifted a bit. Over there, I want to create a mountain. That's where the train station will go. Over there, I would like to have some houses and some trees. Uh, we can use the mobile station to control the illumination or even moving figures. I want to show that in one of our next episodes. Stay tuned. If you have any question, post them in the comments. Until then, goodbye.